Hey, and welcome back to yet another video on foundational biostatistics. We have been together for a few weeks now, right? And we are making a lot of progress. We're getting a lot of good feedback and everyone is loving it. So let's keep the magic rolling. So before we go forward, I mean, you know what you got to do, right? You have to hit that like, sub like, subscribe, comment. Please do that and that will help us so much. Thank you. I think you haven't liked yet. Go ahead, like it. Great. All right, so a little bit about me. Uh, you can read in the description or you can look, pause on this slide to get a good sense of uh, our background. So today we wanna to talk about sampling, estimation and bias. We've broached this subject in the past. Uh, so we're just going to go a little deeper into this. So why do this? Why sample? So when you're studying a phenomenon, it is almost impossible for you to study your target population. Almost impossible. So what happens is that you have to make tough choices. You probably don't have the time. You probably don't have the money to just study the entire population. So what you need is some kind of subpopulation that is representative of your, you know, target population. And that's what we call a sample. Now, when you sample, you want to make sure that that sample actually looks like your target population. And this is where uh, sampling is very important. And one of the things we've learned in the past uh, few videos is that we have some very strong laws, right? The law of the strong law of large numbers, the weak law of large numbers that help us you know, be certain that if we reach a certain sample size, we are getting a good sense of the target population. And that gives us a lot of confidence. So that's why it's really important that you calculate the sample size when you're trying to study a phenomenon. But more importantly, it's very important that the sample population is very close to the target population. Very important. Now, when we do this, there are a few things that we need to keep in mind. There is estimation because we're estimating, right? We're getting data from our sample population to make inferences about the target population. So whatever information we're getting from the sample population is actually an estimate of what we really want to study, which is in the target population, right? And so we need to know certain things about our estimate. What we want to go back to, you remember that video about parameters, right? Based on the different types of distributions. Well, if you don't, or I recommend, highly recommend that you watch the video on parameters because we did a, a, a thorough overview of what parameters were and why they're important. So now, why is it important? Well, when you talk about an estimate, we're estimating, you know, a parameter. So if we're talking about the Bernoulli, if you remember correctly, with the Bernoulli, we had a single parameter, which was labeled P. And when we said binomial, we said we had two parameters, N and P. And if you remember last week's video, we spoke about two parameters, which were the mean, nu, and the standard deviation, which is sigma squared, or the standard, uh, the standard deviation, which is sigma, sorry, and the variance, which is sigma squared. So we are trying to estimate those parameters, right? So that uh, estimates, we usually have a hat, you know, that, so that uh, we will say, well, we're starting a uh, sample it's normally distributed. Uh, we want to estimate the mean mu. So we'll be looking for mu while studying mu hat and looking for sigma while studying, studying sigma hat. So we need to have some kind of assurances about the quality of these estimators, right? Um, so the, these estimators will give us values, which are the estimate. And uh, what we need to know is, is this estimator biased or is it consistent? Now, bias in the sense of statistics is very different from, you know, the methodological point of view where we speak about bias in measurements, bias in the study design, bias in sampling. Here we're talking about bias of the choice of the estimate or estimator, sorry. So if you are thinking about uh, estimating the mean in a population and you decided to collect data on the mean in the sample, you want to know whether that is biased based on the kind of values, how close it gets to mu. So the question is, 
is mu hat equal to mu, right? Where mu hat is the sample population and mu is the target population. If the two are equal, so if mu minus mu hat equals zero, then mu hat is unbiased, right? Um, and another thing we want to know is, is it consistent? What we understand by this is when you collect more and more data, do you get closer to that value? So if you're collecting mu hat and increasing the sample size and you increase the sample size, are you getting closer to mu? If that is the case, then it is consistent. So although bias may seem as a bad thing uh, because we are used to bias in uh, methodological sense and design, sometimes um, statisticians actually will include some kind of bias so that they can get consistency. The, what we want is consistency more than anything else. If we can achieve consistency and unbiasedness, fine. But if we can't, we will usually try to sacrifice some level of unbiasedness to get more consistency, right? So that we can collect more data and get closer to that target population value. So there are multiple ways in which we can think about this and multiple tests that we can do. But for you, it's really important that you appreciate um, what these values are and what they tell you about the target population. So like I mentioned, we're so lucky that the mean is just wonderful, right? It is usually unbiased, it is usually consistent. And that's why we love, 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 love the mean. And that's why, you know, we will um, usually go that direction. But if you remember as well, the mean gets easily distracted by extreme values, right? It just forgets what it's supposed to do. And we're just left, you know, crying. And that's when we start thinking about the median as an alternative, because then the mean is you know, if it's distracted from the center, then that distraction will make it in such a way that mu hat is not equal to mu, right? Mm. And so you will get some kind of bias, right? So we may think about something else, right? Mm, what about the media? Uh, yeah, so it may help us get closer to that answer. So this is how it's important. And then it translates to, you know, parametric tests tending to use the mean more often and non-parametric tests tending to use the median more often. So that you really want to grasp these concepts more and more. We've come to the end of this video today. Once again, I will invite you to like, uh, if you haven't done so yet, I will invite you to share with your friends. If you have comments about what you'd like to see us do in the future, please, please, please write them down. Uh, please subscribe so that when we put out these videos, you have them uh, you know, in your notifications fresh off the batch. So thank you all for all the support you've shown us so far. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to making more videos for you. Ciao.